thanks for having me here. Um, your lovely weather has done something with my throat, but I'll try to get through these 15 minutes. And uh, I will not ask the same question as you did, Keith, if you, if you want to stay when I'm done, because I'm assuming you will, because there's a lot of other interesting presentations coming up after me. Um, well, yeah, I, now I'm down under. I'm going to look up together with you guys, and it's going to be a very broad and overview presentation. Uh, I am a researcher. I'm also a project manager. I work with construction projects, and I work with research. Um, I work for a city of Gothenburg, which is a large public client. There are a number of issues we could talk about, the detailing of research and how the municipal practices. Let's do that later over cocktail. Let me give you an introduction to what's happening with BIM-related issues up north on the other side rather than up there. Okay, this is a short introduction of myself. It's going to be two slides, but I'm just going to skip them quite quickly so you can read them afterwards in the handout material. Uh, I will present something about the Nordic context, what, what is happening there. Uh, comment a little bit on uh, some aspects I think are important. Uh, the relation between assets and user and how that is viewed in the Scandinavian Nordic context. Uh, present a little BIM study we did and also something about production planning and actually also added a slide on integration of comprehensive planning, geotechnical information, GIS and BIM for digital building processes and building, digital building permits. Okay, this is a lot of information about me, but as stated, I work both in practice and at university, and that actually mirrors the situation we have in Sweden, where all construction research has to be done in collaboration with the industry. There is no other way to fund it, basically, and that's the state decision that they want to make the construction industry come close to the research, and they want us researchers to be engaged also in the practice. So I'm very strongly empirically based. We look at what's happening in the sector now. We don't think of construction philosophy. We look at what you guys are doing, and we work on that. And we think that's an important standpoint. The rest you can see, I also work for the city uh, with these change projects. And that in itself could be, of course, a long lecture, but we'll skip that for now as well. And just to look at a few other things that I'm doing. One of my larger projects is concerning construction client capabilities. Basically, how can you tell that the project will cost 20 billion? Because we often know that those figures are not right. So what capabilities does our clients have to actually understand what the sector provides them with? How can we plan for building a ferry-free motorway through north of Norway and actually know in advance how that will turn out? What knowledge, what capabilities do we need? Simple answer would, of course, be that if we do with the support of BIM, we will. But, of course, it's not that simple. There's a lot of other capabilities needs to come into that as well. So, where I come from? I come from Sweden. It's up on the other side. Uh, it's home of uh, Volvo, Ikea, Ericsson, and, of course, of my university, Chalmers University of Technology. Uh, started once by a Scotsman that came to Sweden to do business about 200 years ago. Uh, there's a number of other companies you recognize here on the um, map as well, uh, H&M, Tetra Pak, and others. There's a lot of Swedish companies that have an international presence. And this, my friends, is snow. Um, <clears throat> I wish we had a bit of it outside today, but we don't. But this is the kind of situation we have, and this has actually formed and shaped a lot of our construction. Uh, we have perhaps as much as a meter of frozen water on top of our buildings, a couple of months per year, and that of course shapes our way of thinking of buildings, the way we think about energy efficiency, etc., etc. And this happens to be the entrance to my university, not this winter, but last year. So, whenever you feel like cooling down, you're more than welcome to Chalmers in Sweden. Uh, so, the context. Um, it's easy when you travel around the globe as a researcher to not reflect on that. Wow, wait a minute, here's everything different. So, uh, we are in the north of Europe. We have within the build the environment within buildings a very high focus on energy efficiency, energy installations, buildings, and infrastructure. There's a high focus on how do we build for societal development. Actually, again, of course, roads that should start, you know work out there in temperatures of minus 40 to plus 40. And that's quite a wide variety, and all the con demands requirements account of that. So. Civil works are as equally as important as uh, building. And we have actually, again, the project I mentioned to build a tunnel and motorway through north of Norway to avoid the ferries and the fjords. That's quite a huge project. It's about connecting the north of Norway to Europe. 
Uh, another factor is that we have a large number of public clients, and in Nordic countries, the public clients are actually the major client. They build schools, roads, hospitals, all the public services. And uh, so we have all these stately funded projects as motorways, hospitals that have come into the, sort of the support in the societies we have, and it's all being built by the construction site. So a huge amount of public money being fed that way. That has other implications on some procurement systems and on European directives. So, adding to this, Gothenburg is, of course, Scandinavia's largest port, which adds to the setting we have there. And of course, Australia is somewhere down there, down under, actually, based on this map, we're on the other side. Um, so, it's quite a distance. So, that's the context. Now, let's look at BIM related issues in the Nordic countries. Um, in Denmark, they started a project called the Digital Construction Process, or the Digitale Bigurie, and that started in 2011. It meant that the state required that all publicly funded projects should utilize BIM, no exception. And since then, it has moved into BIPs, which is now an association by contractors, the state, various organizations that actually drive the further development of those requirements, enabling the industry, the funders, the clients, to meet and develop the common standards for utilization of a BIM. So that's the situation in Denmark. In Finland, the same thing. The state property company, Senati, they require that you use BIM if you're going to work for them. Although the business has been slow, and so the state parties go before here. Uh, so there's needs development needed in Finland if you compare the percentages you can see here. If we then look at Norway, uh, all state funded projects, all defense projects should utilize BIM again. And uh, the business is hesitant. However, this new state funded E39, this motorway through north of Norway without the ferries, will drive also BIM in infrastructure. We talk about tunnels and bridges connecting over fjords, deep waters, cold waters, quite an intricate construction project. If we then look at Sweden, we do not still have these requirements from the state, but um, the National Road Authority, they have requirements that we utilize BIM in all of their projects. So it's a coming, it's happening in the business. Currently, a very interesting project also is that the National Authority for Planning and, and Housing are driving a project, a pilot currently undergoing, which focuses on taking geological data into geographical information systems, into the detailed planning process. So that you actually have a detailed building per digital building permit as so an input in your processes for design and construction, digitalizing the whole process. So it's underway, it's coming. Uh, we will have to adapt to that, both as clients and as contractors. So if I would summary, make a summary of what's happening in the Nordic countries, in 2008, most things were 3D, and in 2015, the focus is 5D, where you include calculations and economy as well. There's, of course, an average. Uh, there's a wide variety of companies, small and large, that have reached different levels. But this is the trend. This is where we are going. And of course, there is also nowadays in Europe a directive from the European Union stating that from 2016, all publicly funded projects, the state or the municipalities have the right to require the use and utilization of BIM. So from 2016, the European directive is that all public money that go into construction should be managed through these kind of tools. And of course, the idea behind this is that we should, must be effective with the publicly public funds because we have a shortage of those. We have to increase the value of what we do with public money. Then looking at some aspects of this that are relevant for BIM, uh, I've come across the discussion about asset management. In northern countries, we have a large focus on the, actually the management of the user and the value creation, which sort of makes the asset management issues not so close to the daily activities, actually, but how do we integrate the users, how do we integrate the healthcare, the road works, how do we integrate that into the processes. Uh, there is, for instance, in the Norwegian BIM manual, clear directives about continuous planning analysis based on user requirements and the facility management processes. So that's the take we have in the Nordic countries. Okay, so one of the key issues in Sweden relating to this is, of course, the communication related to information. Uh, so that's the process we are. How do we communicate between maintenance and BIM production? And I will just present a very quick study. Well, this is what we found. Uh, lack of clear requirements from clients, a number of issues that you probably recognize, resistance to change, etc. 
So we need to have inputs here on training, education, and of course there's a number of managerial applications on, and this is about what we should do. We also need to include who is going to do that. So we need the clients, the politicians, which now are enforcing this through the European Union Directive 2016, and that goes on to then the responsibility that have to be taken by consultants and contractors and all of us in the business. We have to take these tools into our projects we work. And the going very practical, and this is a finalizing my presentation, is about using BIM and VR to actually go into virtual production planning. This tool with the actual workers go into the building and look at what they're going to build in advance. This tool is actually used both for planning, so the various subcontractors were assigned the parts of the model, and they had to then to put time and resources needed for that. So this was actually 4D planning of the scheduling of this building. And then they also could go into this VR environment and look at it for us. So what's going to look up there so that when the carpenters came out on site, they knew what the vision was for the building. And it's a very simple tool, a Google's and the ordinary PowerPoint tool to actually support the user's understanding of what are we actually going to do. Of course, the idea behind this to supporting efficiency, effective work processes. Um, so what they discovered in this project was that they had a better understanding of the complex details and they also discovered issues that have been missed in the design process. This contract that they built this for themselves decided yesterday that every project above 50 billion Australian dollars should always utilize BIM from now on. So there is a process ongoing with these kind of indicators from companies as well. We have this process of the pilot project looking into how can we actually digitalize comprehensive planning, detailed planning into building permits, into production, and that will have a huge impact. And that sort of picture illustrates that from sort of soil conditions to what do we actually build in more or less the same model or models. So, concluding, uh, we need to go from the storage of drawings and text and sort of more or less real virtual models to looking into the future. Uh, and the number of reasons for that, our future clients, your future colleagues, they are there on that on the small picture there. They're growing up with iPads. We need them to get engaged in understanding the challenges in construction and in the world that they will live in. And there's actually, then we have to have a focus. We're all condemned to the old practice, almost, although we strive to get further. But these guys, these boys and girls, they're heading for another type of future. So, thanks. <laughs>